Welcome back to another Broken Banners Battle Report. Today, we're going to be doing a request of a mirror matchup, Staniside Baratheon versus Staniside Baratheon. You're going to see a lot of common units because any Baratheon subset is going to be a pretty limited pool of units, and some of them are just hands down better. I'm going to be playing Justin Massey and trying to make Stone Crows work. Stone Crows are a new unit, and they're pretty bad. They're saving 4 7, swinging 6 5 4 on fours with the order in sight. Woo! And they've got disorganized, because why wouldn't they have a downside as a five point unit? They also have recruiting from the hills, though, which really helps give them some additional survivability, assuming they don't get absolutely blown up, which is going to heal them one plus one for each missing rank every time they activate. I'm sticking Justin Massey in them to help neutralize their morale by setting them to five up with morale rally point. I'm going to be giving them tactical reposition to help them not get absolutely caught out and murdered. And then he's also going to be bringing a handful of cards that'll give them additional survivability through sudden retreat and pressure supplies, and more importantly, regroup and reform. That way I can get Justin Massey out of this dog shit unit and into a good unit. And I can instead put Davos into them because supply aid is essentially going to turn recruiting from the hills at last rank to a net zero. So you can just turn these guys into a little supply aid battery. For units, I have Kingsmen, who are one of, if not the most powerful, infantry units in the game right now. They're probably honestly a little overtuned. They're swinging 7 6 5 on 3 up with Sundering natively, and they have Crypt Blow and rerolls as long as your opponent doesn't control the crown. So, more often than not, they're going to have all of those things. They also have two of the last, and with their pretty solid saves, this actually makes them a really, really difficult unit to kill, considering how much damage they're putting out. I've also got Lightbringers, which are another Stannis staple. They've got a pretty solid save ratios, and some pretty decent ranged attack. What's really nice is they've got Vicious, and what's essentially a reusable version of Spread Fear. Rather than an order, it's a static ability. It's pretty nice. Finally, I've got Champions of the Stag, which I don't think I'm really going to be running anymore with the introduction of Crownland Scouts. Sorry, champs. They're slow, they're sturdy, but they don't hit particularly hard. Is there an 8-point cavalry block? But until Crownland Scouts come out, I don't really have any other options. For NCUs, I have Patchface, Alistair Florent, and Crescent. Alistair Florent is just really nice to be running in Baratheons, especially with Kingsmen, to make sure that your opponent never has control of the crowns, and you are always slapping them at full strength. Patchface is a nice, really good control piece that's got a starter round effect to help fish cards out of your enemy's hand, and then Crescent can turn the garbage crown zones into the amazing letter zone with a fantastic once-per-game ability that's going to let him jump onto the NCU board before your opponent actually gets a start of turn trigger. He's a really nice piece, and I think another staple to the Baratheon side, though if you're running a different 5-point NCU, which you're going to see on the other end, you might not want to run him. For Ryan's list, he's going to be running Vargo Hoat. Vargo Hoat is a pretty common pick right now, Baratheon side, especially alongside Kingsmen and Crescent, to try and get the fabled 3-hit wombo combo of getting Careless Aggression, Crescent, and your activation all more or less back-to-back -back with a minor interruption of an NCU activation, but that's not what this list is doing. Instead, this list is going to be sticking Vargo Hout and Kingsmen to make a very aggressive unit and using his card support to help out the NCU suite, which you'll see in a moment. Ryan is also running Lightbringers, except instead of Davos, he's going to be running Red Priestess, which allows you to burn through some of your own wounds to put out some condition tokens and really max out the Lightbringer damage. He's also running Relore Faithful with the Stagnite Noble to really nail up their morale to an amazing 3-up, as well as giving them go-down fighting, which helps them win a lot more trades than you would imagine. Finally, he's got Wardens with Sandor Clegane in them to put out some additional weaken token generation and just give a really solid block to base yourself around and get some objective points. The NCU suite is where this list really shines, because he's running Melisandre. Melisandre got a much-needed nerf recently, where instead of being global, she's reduced to long range, but still she's packing some serious power. She's got an influence that's going to give whatever unit she's influencing vicious, but when she influences a unit, you may have them suffer two wounds and a panic test. 
regardless of whether you pass a panic test or not, you get to target an enemy unit in long range and make them take a panic test at minus two. And if they fail, they take an extra two wounds. This is incredible just on its own because it's on top of whatever zone you're doing, though keep in mind this is relying on panic tests on both sides. It's very possible, and I know I've had it a few times, where I take five wounds because I crit failed my own panic test to deal nothing to my opponent. You might just give up five wounds for nothing and reverse Tycho yourself, spending a five-point block on an NCU to hurt yourself. Wow, good job. But at the same time, you can absolutely completely swing a battle and just deal five wounds without really going too hard out of your way. You still get whatever NCU zone you were taking. Combine this with Crippler's Infamy, and you can potentially be taking a minus four panic test that can net you up to as much as seven wounds. If you're poor Stone Crows, you could be taking eight and just die. Stack that up with the crowns too, and I think you could see where this goes. One shot Stone Crows, bye bye. What's better than one Melisandre? That's right, two Melisandres. He's running Jack in his well to copy that influence and copy the panic bomb. His last NCU is going to be Shay, who's going to give a little bit of healing, but more importantly, some additional weakened token generation to help smooth out Vargo's kit. We're going to be playing on Dance of Dragons, which I think is one of the worst game modes for Baratheons, which makes this really funny for a matchup. As usual, we're going to do player choice terrain on this one. We're going to start off with Ryan placing a forest in the dead center of the map assumedly to try and increase the armor of whatever poor Assad gets to the point first. I'm going to put a happy tree down over towards the side because there is a potential my stone crows get one shot off Melisandre taking crowns. That's absolute bullshit. Uh, understandably, Ryan's going to put out a corpse pile to try and make sure that he can do something silly like one shot my stone crows with a single NCU activation because, hey, isn't that funny? I'm going to put down some stakes because he doesn't have any cavalry and can't really adequately respond to the threat. We're then going to choose our sides and swap them around. We do it the lazy way. Thanks, by just swapping things around rather than actually swapping over to other sides of the table. Uh, the camera setup's a lot, all right? Cut me some slack. Deployment goes, and I'm going to make Ryan deploy first. He's going to put his wardens straight down the center, a classic choice that you really can't go wrong with. I'm going to put my champions of the stag opposite the stakes because they are technically probably the most maneuverable unit on this battlefield. Close to it, though, are the Relore Faithful who are going to go on the opposite side of the stakes because what do they care about the damage? They have the love of the Red God. I'm then going to go ahead and put down my Lightbringers with Davos on the opposite side of the Happy Tree, and he's going to go ahead and put his Lightbringers down opposite my Lightbringers. I have a nice little shoot-off. I'm then going to put my Stone Crows all the way in that far little corner, and I'm going to try and do something cheeky and hope that it works out. He's going to put his Kingsmen in the corner, assumingly try, try and snipe out my Commander, either by killing the storm, Stone Crows or just sniping out the Commander. I'm going to do my best to not let that happen. Ryan's going to go first, and he's going to go ahead and take the letters, weakening my bows and putting an additional order token on Deshay. I'm then going to go ahead and activate Patchface, putting them on the horses and maneuvering up my stone crows and spinning them around to face off towards the right side, preferably in the opposite direction. Yes, it's towards the corpse pile, but it's away from the Lightbringers and the Kingsmen who are... Very likely to just absolutely eviscerate my poor, poor stone crows. I don't really necessarily want to get them too far away from Davos. The dream is to keep them somewhere near the fight and get Davos in them and just keep popping off heels with them every single round. But I don't want to lose them to something silly like a single attack. He's going to go ahead and put Melisandre onto crowns. There's nobody in range to zap and champions of the stag pass the test. I'm then going to activate Crescent and pass, and he's going to go ahead and maneuver his faithful up towards the stakes, trying to take swords to go ahead and blow them up, but I'm going to put Alistair onto swords. I'll do nothing with it, but I'll prevent him from destroying the stakes this round. He's then going to put Jackins onto bags, doing basically nothing, and we're going to activate units. I go ahead and march my Kingsmen towards the center, and he's going to go ahead and move his Wardens opposite, which are probably the best unit to try and tango with my Kingsmen. I'm then going to move my Davos Lightbringers up to try and threaten basically the entirety of his army, and he's going to move up his Kingsmen to try and scare me into submission. And admittedly, it's kind of working. My Stone Crows are looking really edible right now, and I think I'd rather have my Lightbringers get tangled up in melee. 
I'm then going to activate my champions of the stag and move them towards the point. I don't actually intend on picking up that point, but I mean, it's good to have the option. Start of his turn, I'm going to tackle reposition my stone crows. That way I have a clear march behind my line, nice and safe. He, for his action on his turn, is going to activate his Lightbringers, and he's going to maneuver them on up so that they're a little bit out of range of my archers, but when I predictably shoot his Kingsmen the next round and shift up or around to do it, he'll be able to shift up and shoot my Lightbringers in retaliation, which is a pretty solid strategy. My own strategy now is to run my Stone Crows far, far away, and I'm going to march them their whole 10 on inches up, Ideally, I'd like to have them sit on that corpse pile out of long range of any of his units so he can't Melisandre bomb me. Start of round two, I'm going to use one of my patch face tokens to make him discard careless aggression since with the way simultaneous triggers work, I won't be able to stop him from using it round three when he goes first. Round two starts, I go first and I'm going to activate Alistair Florin and put him onto the swords and I'm going to use my Lightbringers to shoot him in the face. He's got a ton of weakened token generation, so my Lightbringers are basically always weakened, and I'm constantly going to be tossing out maybe two, three hits on a good attack. Woo. But still, most of their damage does come out of Panicked, and even with the tree, and it is a front shot, they're still going to be taking the Panic Test at a negative modifier, so I get a couple wounds through on the actual hits, and then a couple more on the Panic Test. I unfortunately don't get the spread fear aspect to do any damage, but hey, I still took a rank off, and I'm going to use Alistair's ability to move him off of the swords and onto the bags so he can't mitigate the damage that Melisandre is going to deal to himself, as well as the damage I've already dealt to him. There's not much he can really do with swords right now, but he's still going to go ahead and he's going to take Shay, put her onto the swords, put out a weakened token with Shay onto my Lightbringers, and he's going to destroy the stakes. I'm going to go ahead, put Patch Face onto horses, and maneuver my Stone Crows even more to try and get them to haul rear on over to that other objective. He's then going to activate Jacken, booting him on letters, using Jacken's precision influence, the base influence, onto the Wardens and weakening my Kingsmen. He's going to pitch the Stained Assault because he's reached his max hand size. I'm going to put Crescent onto Crowns, and he's going to put Oath of Booty onto Wardens. Crescent turns the Crowns into the letters, and I make his Wardens vulnerable. Brian's then going to activate his Kingsmen, and they've got a solid morale with a tree right there. He decides, might as well make a charge. Worst case scenario, he falls on top of the point, which is exactly what happens. It was a 5-up charge, so it was pretty unlikely to happen, but if he did manage to land it, he would probably completely skew that side of the battlefield. I then activate my Lightbringers, having narrowly dodged death, and I'm going to shoot him now in the flank. This is unfortunately the only part that sucks for him, is that he doesn't get to pivot around afterwards. But he's just going to go ahead and threaten my Lightbringers and on his turn. That way, when I make my Retaliation attack, it's weakened, and I'm not going to get that much off on him. He's going to pass that Panic Test that hits him in the flank, and he's going to Brathian Conviction. So in sum, I only deal one wound, and he still has the objective, which is actually a pretty good deal for him. He's then is going to activate his Faithful, and he's just going to maneuver them on up. I'm then going to activate Massey and my Stone Crows, and I'm going to keep hauling rear on over to that point. Hopefully, I'll be able to take that point next round with a march, and hopefully just not get flank charged by a really big Faithful charge. They are pretty quick, so I have to admit it's possible. Start of his turn, I'm going to use Tactical Reposition to shift the Champions of the Stag up a little bit, and he's going to use his Warden's Threaten off of Sandor to weaken my Lightbringers yet again. Those guys are never getting an unweakened attack out unless I can get a Stag's Wit. He moves up his Wardens, leaving the point open to try and bait out my Kingsmen into charging him. I'm going to activate my Champions of the Stag and then march and maneuver them forward to try and get into the flank of the Faithful and maybe even next round into the rear. I don't want to get tied up with a Panic Skew unit on a unit that's priding itself on armor saves, not morale saves. His final activation, Ryan's going to go ahead and march up his Lightbringers to get in range of the fight and probably start raining down onto those Kingsmen he's trying to trap down the center. We'll see if I fall for it, but at this point, I don't really see a reason to rush down there. Besides, he goes first round three, and although I am going to make him pitch a Crippler's Infamy with my second patch face token, making me go two for two on that one, he's going to charge my Lightbringers in the flank with his Kingsmen, 
and he's gonna do a lot of damage. As a part of this attack, he's gonna consume that weakened token to kill Davos. So there goes my big play of regroup reforming, moving Davos on over to the Stone Crows. It's a good thing I got the Stone Crows out of there, because they're really not gonna do much for me now with Davos gone. I'm gonna play Precious Supplies, though, to try and heal back three of that. It shares a trigger with Sudden Retreat and Final Strike, both of which at that time I have in my hand, but I feel like the heal actually has a lot of value, especially in Baratheons, which, as I mentioned before, don't have that much native healing. After that, I'm actually going to go ahead and activate Alistair and put him onto the bags for another three points of healing, and I'm going to use his ability to move him onto the swords so he can't push any additional damage through. So despite having taken a massive hit, I'm only a couple wounds down. He then is going to take bags with Melisandre, using her to heal the faithful from the damage they're taking from the Melisandre ability, and he's going to bomb my Champions of the Stag for five wounds. Ouch! I crit failed on that one, and it really hurt. I'm going to go ahead and take Patch Face onto the horses and use it to retreat my Lightbringers. I'm okay with losing the five wounds on the Champions of the Stag and not being able to heal them up more if it means I'm able to get another shot off with my Lightbringers off somewhere else and slow down the Speed 2 Kingsmen because they're holding the objective. It's a rough trade, and I'm really hoping I don't absolutely get obliterated the next Jack and Bomb, but we'll see how that goes for me. Because sure enough, Jack is going to take crowns, and he's going to copy Melisandre. My luck turns on the other end, and I get box cards on my panic save, and I play Conviction, so I actually heal two instead of taking any damage. Ryan forgets to take the wounds off of Jacken's ability because Jacken still costs you wounds. He's going to take the crowns, though, with Jacken, and I take three wounds off of that, so I still don't get scot free, and I'm going to be a rank down. I'm then going to activate Crescent, put him onto letters, panic the King's Men to set up for my Lightbringers, and I'm going to go ahead and draw two up, taking those. He's then going to attack with the Lightbringers, and he's going to put out a Panicked and a Vulnerable with them, and again, forget to take the wounds. He puts a lot of damage through onto my King's Men, using some of those tokens, and it, we probably really should have been better about keeping track about the self-damage, considering how much self-damage his list is doing, but as you're going to see... The dice are really going to start skewing in one of our favors. I'm not going to mention who, and it's probably good that he had a little bit of handicap. The panic test gets me to drop the objective, and it moves closer to his wardens, and I'm starting to see what his plan was. I did overextend with my Kingsmen, and he's still going to be able to go ahead and take that. I'm then going to activate, and I'm going to play that regroup and reform, moving Massey on over to my Kingsmen to bring them into the center since they're relatively safe from Varko and I don't have to worry about them getting sniped, and more importantly, healing my Kingsmen up using the Stone Crows as was originally intended. Since they're missing a rank when I activate the Stone Crows, they are going to heal too, which helps mitigate a lot of that. I then charge with the Kingsmen and get straight on into those Wardens. I'm not weakened. But I also don't have crowns, so I'm only going to be throwing out Sundering. I still have my rerolls. He's got the tree that's canceling out the Sundering. I only get about three wounds through, all said and done, and I'm going to take a wound off the Counter Strike. On top of that, he's going to Final Strike. So I'm going to take three back, and I'm actually going to take all of these wounds because I'm taking it at the minus one since he's got the crowns and with the Vulnerable token. He's able to push through more damage onto my Kingsmen than I did to him which is something that a lot of people think Baratheons do pretty often, but it's not as common as you think. After that, he's going to go ahead and activate his Faithful, and he's going to use one of his Faith tokens to give him charge rerolls, and he's going to go on after my Stone Crows. At this point, I'm terrified. If they get into my flank, I'm dead. But even with the rerolls, he doesn't manage to land the pretty heavy charge that he was going after. But it does open up the way for my Champions of the Stag, who are going to maneuver and land a pretty beefy charge of a 4-up onto the Warden's flank. So now, what he was trying to do to me, I've done to him and his Wardens. The Champions of the Stag also don't do too much damage, but it's something. Wardens are then going to swing back at the ward my Kingsmen, and because they've got the Weaken token on them off the Champions of the Stag attack, they actually don't deal any wounds at all. And I'm going to play Baratheon Conviction to heal them back up to a full two ranks, and then I'm going to play Sudden Retreat. And on the die, I get really lucky, and I nail the six. This is huge. Generally, you're going to have a hard time moving around and dance with dragons because your speed gets reduced to two. But if you find yourself in a position where you can retreat while holding the objective, you can kind of overcome that with a really big retreat roll, which I managed to do. 
I managed to move a whole 8 inches, which is the Warden's march range. It's a really heavy charge for them, and although it puts myself in danger of the faithful, I'm essentially out of range of the King's Men on his side who are sitting with the objective themselves. I get the Stone Crows onto my objective that I wanted the whole time, and I'm just going to hope to put enough pressure on him that I don't get Melisandre nuked out of existence. I put a final shot with Lightbringers onto Vargo, and he manages to pass his panic test despite the panic token. Start of the round, I get to go first, and I patch phase out another Crippler's Infamy, but I don't get a hit on that one. He doesn't have it in hand, so I just put Alistair onto Swords, moving him with his last token onto the Crowns, and I'm going to shoot Vargo in the flank with my Lightbringers. This is one of the rare opportunities where I don't have a weakened token on me, so I'm able to actually push through a lot of damage and kill him with the hits, getting him to his first to the last token. He's going to go ahead and make that save since it's a morale of a 5 up, and it's very likely to happen, and it's unaffected by things like Vicious. He does fail that resulting panic test, though, and burns his second to the last token. Start of his turn, I tactical reposition Massey away to help compensate for the fact that he's no longer burdened by the objective and could flank charge me. For his activation, he goes ahead and puts Melisandre onto the bags, healing Vargo up to try and survive a little bit longer, using Threaten to put a weakened token on out onto me. This time we remember the damage and take it off the Faithful, who passed their panic test, and he's going to go after my Champions of the Stag, trying to just blast them out of there, but they get lucky and make their panic test. After that, it's my turn, and I'm going to put Patch Face onto the Swords. Lightbringers are going to go ahead and shift, trying to get into the way of the Light Kingsmen, and I'm going to shoot him in the flank again. The Weakens used, but I'm still able to get a lot of hits through, and manage to do some damage, but most importantly, the Panic pushes him on over, and the Kingsmen are dead, dropping the objective off a little bit further away. He's then going to go ahead and activate Shay, heal up his Wardens a point, and maneuver his Lightbringers to try and get them back into the fight after I manage to retreat out my Kingsmen. I activate Crescent, put him onto the letters, and weaken those Lightbringers who have a flank shot on my Kingsmen. His turn, he's going to go ahead and use Wardens Threaten onto my Kingsmen to set them on up, and the Wardens, bogged down, are going to swing on into the Champions of the Stag. They have a weakened token on themselves, because that objective token allowed me to put a weakened token out onto him when I attacked him with the Kingsmen, and after using the weakened token, he's going to get, I think, like, two hits or something like that, and my two-up armor saves just completely bounce him off. He doesn't waste the vulnerable token, I play Precious Supplies, and I'm able to heal a whopping one wound and remove those condition tokens. The one wound is all I need, because that's going to get me back up to two ranks and get me back to swinging to my maximum value. For my activation, I'm going to activate my Lightbringers and move them onto the point. This is partially a bait of my own because I want to try and threaten him and get him to shoot my Lightbringers rather than into the flank of my Kingsmen. He goes for the bait, he takes two wounds off of himself, remembering this time, putting two condition tokens out onto me and shooting me in the face. I've got a weakened token on him from earlier, and after that he's only going to generate three hits. And I get really lucky, and even after the vulnerable token, make all three saves. So we don't even get to the panic test, I keep my objective token, and I've just basically wasted one of his activations, which has been rough. He has not been rolling well, failing most of his saves. It's just not been going great, especially considering how many panic tests I've been going, and oh look at that! I got four crits with my standing attack off my Champions of the Stag. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, so there's eight hits going in at the Wardens, but to even it out a little bit, I do fail my Counter Strike, and I go back down to one rank. But that one additional rank was just enough for that attack to really get a big hit on through. After the Vulnerable Token, I only get a few wounds on the Wardens, but they're saving on threes, and... I just got a really big hit with a unit that's throwing six dice. I'm not going to complain. He goes ahead and activates his faithful, and this time he has no choice but to land on the less desirable target of my Kingsmen rather than my fragile stone crows, but he still gets on in there, putting out a panic token with the faith ability that gave him rerolls because he's really not messing around, and he's going to get through a ton of damage. I'm going to go ahead and play Final Strike which is going to deal basically the max damage back on to him, and I'm going to take a wound off of go down fighting and be left with just Justin Massey with his two to the last tokens. He healed two off of that attack by using one of those faith tokens for essentially fueled by slaughter, which he applies at the end, but it's only two, not three, because that's how many wounds he could have healed from the attack before the final strike went off. 
I then activate Justin Massey, not the Kingsman because it's just Justin Massey left, and play Sustained Assault, swinging on into him. This time, I have the crown, so I've got re-rolls, which I already had from Sustained Assault, but more importantly, Crit Blow, which is just enough as I get through exactly seven hits onto him, and he, saving on sixes, doesn't manage to land any of those, and his unit's just going to become a corpse. Go Down Fighting deals two wounds to me, I path both of my to the last tokens, and manage to barely survive with literally nothing but Justin Massey and a dream left on my tray, and I guess that one weakened token. I surge forth my mighty two inches further away from everything, hoping to try and get out of Melisandre range, keeping everything else out, and at this point we're going to go ahead and tally the score because there's nothing left to do, and we're going to see that the score is 8-2. to two. It's not going anywhere, I just need to turtle the last round, so we call the game there. Neither of our lists really got to do what they wanted to do, which is something that's going to happen a lot of the times in mirror matchups. You're both kind of basing yourselves around similar goals, but you both have similar weaknesses, so you might just end up neutering out each other's strengths. In that case, that's kind of what happened with the Baratheon matchup, though admittedly, the dice rolls were really, really, really bad in Ryan's favor. I'd like to get a rematch against him when he's running this list and I'm running my list, though maybe not both together. <laughs> we managed to avoid seeing the miraculous panic one-shot on my Stone Crows, and I'd like to go my entire life without ever seeing that. But the potential does exist, and I think Stone Crows, I might be coping myself into thinking this, might not actually be terrible. Meanwhile, Melisandre Double Bomb still has some solid potential, and as long as you don't roll absolutely dog shit and whiff multiple attacks for zero hits and zero wounds, you might be able to get somewhere with it. Anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in. As always, if you have any suggestions, please go ahead and shoot us a message, leave a comment, whether it be a list, a matchup, whatever it is you like, we're always happy to get additional ideas to turn into videos. And if you deem us worthy of hitting those magical buttons, go ahead and hit the like button or any of the others that make the YouTube algorithm really happy. Thank you, and see you next time.